Hey, we're back on Green River Lake today. I'm going to talk about cane pole fishing. When fish go shallow, I like to use a cane pole. If it's eight foot or less, it's it's easier to use a cane pole. They get in that thick cover, you can just pluck them out, no problem. If you get hung up, snap it, snap your line, get your hook back, and you're right back to fishing. I'm going to show you my setup. I use a Mr. Crappie telescoping pole. Use a number two hook. Let's see if I can zoom in on it here. Use a number two hook, a number four split shot, and a two inch cork bobber, not cork, styrofoam. And I use it, I just peg it. That way you can slide it up and down. If you use it as a slip bobber, it seems like you just stay hung up all the time. But I got 17 pound test line on here. So when you get hung up, straighten it out, bend it, right back to fishing. You see I got tape on it. Every time you have to retie, your line gets shorter and it won't it won't reach this little hook keeper. So I just keep sticking my hook in this tape until I get to about here and then I just put a new line on it. But you turn around here and I'll show you how to set the depth. You see the piece of cover right there that we're going to fish and you don't know exactly how deep it is. The way that I tie these, your hook, if you put your hook right here, it puts it about a little over a foot off the bottom. I do this, this is my redneck way. Put my pole down till it touches bottom. Right here is my water line. I forgot my... I forgot my chesty, so I'm trying to do all this with one hand. And you slide your bobber to that wet spot, and then that will put you one foot off the bottom. And then you just let the fish tell you if you need to slide your bobber up and down. I mean, if they bite it and your bobber goes plumb out of sight, you can, you're fishing too shallow, you need to slide your bobber up. If your bobber lays on its side, you're fishing too deep, you need to slide your bobber down. Let's we'll see if I can catch one here. On these cane poles, you want to use your wrist and use the weight of the sinker to get your distance. So like start out with a pole about 12 o'clock, drop it down to about 10, and just use the momentum of the sinker to, to swing it out. So you just drop it down and set it down real easy. You take this fish off and I'll uh, get you another. I ran off and left half of my equipment, so I promise I will do another video where I'll set up a tripod and that way you can see what I'm doing. But anyway, take your rod to 12, drop the tip, set it down real easy. There's already one on it. Just like that. It's simple. It's going to be a short video. It's my favorite way to fish, especially when they're shallow. We've won a Crappie USA Amateur Division and the Pro Division using a $12 cane pole. simple there's a lot of people think that with all the new electronics you got to have it you got to have it I have I have fished this way since I can see over the side of the boat and I can tell you you can catch your limit quick um, and it's fun more than likely, if you book a trip with me, I'm going to hand you a cane pole, and then we're going to go catch fish. It's easy. Kids can do it. Uh, 
There's a bluegill. A lot of the old timers, they like using the cane pole because it takes them back to their childhood memories so that's how they used to fish. When I was little, we cut our own reed canes, put them in the barn, and let them dry out a little bit. And we just tie fishing line on them and go fishing. You don't get bit within the, you don't get bit within 10 seconds. Pick it up and move it over a foot or so. I boat flipped a two pounder on one of these. Actually 201. If you have a piece of visible cover, like that stump right there, the wind is blowing right to left on me today. You want to set your bait on the upstream upwind side of the stump and let the wind take your bait past it. So like you want to put it just about a foot or so on the other side of it, and the wind will take will drift it right in front of the fish's nose. There's a, there's a male. He's got, he's got his colors. Remember, just keep it simple. You don't need all this fancy stuff to catch fish. If you want to order one of these poles, go to mrcroppy.com. I use the 12 and 14 foot links. Uh, you can leave it in the comments. I'll come. I'll respond on how I rig them, how I tie the line around the end. Just get out there and go fishing. Thanks for watching. Here we got a log that's washed in. What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start right here and just work my way back. Leave it in there, you know, like I said, 10 seconds or so. You don't get bit, keep moving it. But get the fish closest to you, then work your way back. That way you don't spook as many. If you ever get one that swallows it deep like that, Here's what I like to do. Find out, like he's hooked in the roof of the mouth. Hold your line, lay your finger on the hook, and just push straight back until it comes out. And the hook will be right on your finger like that. The little barb will hang in your nail and pull it right out. It won't stick in your finger or nothing. It don't, it don't damage the fish. It comes out pretty easy. On my minnows, I like to hook them through the tail. I know a lot of people hook them through the eyeballs, hook them through the back, but if you hook them through the tail, they squirm. And that's what I think gets more bites. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but there's a stump right there. In the winter when the water is low at winter pool, we could come in here when it's below freezing, you can walk on the mud we drive tobacco sticks in and give the crappie a place to spawn. The thing about crappie, if, if they don't sling your minna, when you catch one, get right back in there as soon as you can. They just keep biting. But usually these little ones sling your minna about as fast as you can put them on. Ooh, look at that, stole my minna. Another fish, another minnow. So whenever you go to buy minnows, make sure you buy a couple hundred and not a dozen.